In this video, we'll explain why soil differs from other engineering materials, such as steel and concrete, and define some of its key properties that will help us characterize it as an engineering material. We know that soil is what results when rock is eroded and broken down by wind, water and ice. What results is a matrix of solid particles that rest one on top of another. The void space that exists between the particles can be filled with air or water or a combination of both. For this reason, soil is often referred to as a three-phase material. Also, being porous, water can enter and leave the soil at any time, so its density and moisture content are variables. Let's look at how these can vary. Imagine cutting through the soil and looking in from the side. We would see the ground level and at some depth we would encounter the water table. The soil immediately below the water table is submerged and obviously all of its voids are filled with water. Immediately above the water table the void space often remains filled with water due primarily to capillary action. The soil in this zone is referred to as saturated. Continuing upwards, we reach a point where the void space is occupied by air and water. Thus, the soil becomes unsaturated. And finally, due to the sun's heat, we often encounter a layer of dry soil close to the surface. Of course, the depth of dry, unsaturated and saturated soil varies with the amount of rainfall and sunshine in a given area. So the geotechnical engineer needs to be able to determine where each condition occurs. This is typically done by installing special pipes known as standpipes or piezometers to monitor the water table and by recovering tube or core samples of soil so we can calculate the soil's density. To do these calculations, it's helpful if we define some soil properties. Let's start with the moisture content W. Moisture content is equal to the mass of water in the soil divided by the mass of dry solids, and this is normally expressed as a percentage. We use the mass of dry solids as it is assumed to remain constant, while the volume of voids may change. Density is defined as mass over volume. So for example, the density of water can be expressed as the mass of water divided by the volume of water. Because of the presence of voids, it's useful if we can express the proportion of void space present. We do this by defining the voids ratio, E. And the voids ratio is equal to the volume of voids divided by the volume of solids. The degree of saturation, SR, is also a useful property to be able to calculate. SR is defined as the volume of water divided by the volume of voids, and it is normally expressed as a percentage. Finally, one slightly unusual but extremely useful material property known as the specific gravity, GS. GS is the ratio of how heavy a soil particle is relative to an equal volume of water. So GS is equal to the density of the soil particle divided by the density of water. Another way of expressing this is the mass of solid divided by the volume of solid multiplied by the density of water. And GS has no units. Let's gather these five definitions together and highlight them in our notes. We will use them many times in the course of our studies and beyond. The moisture content is equal to the mass of water divided by the mass of solids, expressed as a percentage. Density is equal to the mass of a substance divided by its volume. Megagrams per meter cubed are the units normally used in soil mechanics work. The voids ratio E is equal to the volume of the voids divided by the volume of solids. Saturation 
is equal to the volume of water divided by the volume of voids, again expressed as a percentage. And the specific gravity of a soil particle is equal to the mass of solids divided by the volume of solids multiplied by the density of water. And GS has no units. Now let's use these properties to establish some general relationships for each of the four soil conditions identified earlier. Let's start with an image and from this we will create a simple model to assist in our calculations. Taking the ground level as shown, with the water table located here, we can easily identify the submerged soil, the saturated soil, the unsaturated and dry soil. Starting with the unsaturated soil, we see its three-phase nature. Imagine for a moment that we were able to take all the soil particles and fuse them into a solid volume so there are no air voids. And if we do likewise with the water and air, we get the idealized model shown here. We can represent the masses of each phase along the left hand side with ms equal to the mass of solids, mw the mass of water. And since air has no mass, the total mass is given by adding ms and mw. The volumes of each phase can also be represented on the diagram. Vs represents the volume of solids, Vw the volume of water, and Va the volume of air. Note that Vw and Va combine to give what's known as the volume of voids. And adding this to the volume of solids gives us the total volume. So, starting with the basic definition of density, which is equal to mass over volume, and breaking it into its component parts for the unsaturated soil, we get density is equal to the mass of solids plus the mass of water divided by the volume of solids plus the volume of voids. We can now draw on our five definitions defined earlier to make appropriate substitutions. For example, from the definition of GS, we can substitute GS times VS times rho W for MS. Similarly, MW can be replaced by rho W VW, giving us density now equal to GS Vs rho w plus rho w vw all divided by Vs plus Vv. Now, as the soil is unsaturated, we can rearrange the definition of saturation to give us Sr times Vv as a substitution for Vw. We're nearly there. So, we now have density is equal to Gs times Vs times rho W plus our new substitution Sr times Vv times rho W again all divided by Vs plus Vv. Now if we divide above and below by Vs we get that density is equal to Gs times Vs divided by Vs times rho W plus Sr times Vv divided by Vs times rho w, all divided by Vs over Vs plus Vv over Vs. And note that Vv over Vs is equal to E, our voids ratio, and this gives the final expression for the unsaturated or bulk density of the soil, equal to Gs plus Sr times E, all multiplied by rho w over 1 plus E. The hard work is now done and we can use our general expression for bulk density to find the other three densities. For example, when the soil is fully saturated, SR is equal to 100%. So the saturated density simply becomes GS plus E all by rho W divided by 1 plus E. Similarly, if the soil is dry, SR is equal to zero, 
and the dry density is given by Gs times rho w all over 1 plus e. The submerged density, usually indicated by rho prime, requires a little bit of algebra, which I'm going to allow you to complete. Here's how we start. The submerged density is equal to the saturated density minus the density of water. Now substituting for the saturated density, we have Gs plus E times rho W all over 1 plus E minus the density of water. When worked through, you should get that the submerged density is equal to Gs minus 1 all multiplied by rho w divided by 1 plus e. To conclude, let's use these expressions to determine each density if the following soil properties were determined from lab tests on core samples. Before we start, ask yourself what values should we expect and which density will be the greatest and which will be the smallest. Let's see. The dry density is equal to Gs times rho w over 1 plus e. Substituting, we get 2.7 multiplied by 1000, all divided by 1.8, giving us a dry density of 1500 kilograms per meter cubed. The bulk density is equal to Gs plus Sr times e, all multiplied by rho w, divided by 1 plus e. Substituting gives us 2.7 plus 0.85 multiplied by 0.8 and all multiplied by 1000 and divided by 1.8. This gives us a bulk density of 1878 kilograms per meter cubed. The saturated density is equal to Gs plus E all multiplied by rho W and divided by 1 plus E. Substituting in, we get 2.7 plus 0.8 multiplied by 1000 and divided by 1.8, giving us a result of 1944 kilograms per meter cubed. And finally, the submerged density is given by Gs minus 1, all multiplied by rho w and divided by 1 plus e. Substituting, we get 2.7 minus 1 multiplied by 1000 and all divided by 1.8 giving us a submerged density of 944 kilograms per meter cubed. Always ask yourself do these results make sense? With experience you'll soon be able to tell. Oh and one final thing. We recall from our physics that it is a simple calculation to change from density to unit weight we simply multiply the relevant density by the acceleration due to the Earth's gravity. And it's normal practice in geotechnics to express the result in kilonewtons per meter cubed. Click here to continue with the next video.